Hi there, it's Amy with Teacher with Mrs. Biswell. And today I have kind of a different video. It is my top, uh, let's see, 10, maybe 11 tips for new teachers or really any teachers. It doesn't have to be new teachers. So my teaching journey started um, 20 years ago. I know, I'm old. I'm old. Um, I taught kindergarten. I taught pre-K and kindergarten for ten years. Then I left the field to raise my babies. I went back into education in 2015 as um, like a sub position as like the sub coordinator at a high school which was completely different than my kindergarten days. And um, that was a great gig for a couple of years, but it gets old getting up at 4.30 and listening to everyone fake cough that they're sick. <laughs> like truth be told. So I um, left there. So some personal things happened that I'm not gonna go into, but I just never thought I'd be able to be a classroom teacher again. And um, I became a paraprofessional, or an ed tech as they call it in Maine, for my daughter's class in 2019, nope, 2020. And it was a first grade class and I really enjoyed it and um, worked with a great teacher and was like, oh, I do, and I can handle it emotionally. So I took a long-term sub -gib gig as a third grade teacher in my daughter's school. And um, <clears throat> that turned into a full-time position and now I'm the third grade teacher at her school. Or she's not in this school anymore, but at that school. And I absolutely love it. So third grade is like the sweet spot. They are independent, but still cool to like your teacher. I still get love notes and hugs, and um, they get a little bit of sarcasm, and um, they usually already know how to read, so you're just really pushing content. Um, so a lot less tying shoes, and yeah. I think kindergarten is great when you're young and you don't have a family, but I couldn't imagine teaching kindergarten and going home to my own children. Like it would just be too much. Like as it is, it's too much. Um, but we're gonna get into why it's too much in this video. So my first tip for new teachers is to build community, both in your classroom and within your building. So what I mean is build community in your classroom with your students, strong relationships, because students will do better if they think and know you care and that you're invested. So I spend the first four to six weeks building a classroom community and going over expected behaviors and you know, what's an expected behavior, what's an unexpected behavior. And I really drive that home because that's gonna make teaching so much easier for me um, when, it when it comes time to really doing the content. How do things work in our classroom? How does morning meeting run? How do does math workshop run, ELA centers? So we try things doing that those first four to six weeks that really you know, they get it down to a science. Um, you know, how we use technology, how we bookshop, all of those things that really make the classroom run like a well-oiled machine. And then build strong relationships in your, in your building with your colleagues and with your admin. Um, don't be intimidated by your admin. I've learned so much from so many of my principals. Um, I've been blessed to work with great admin that um, are not in it for power 
and they want want to see their teachers succeed because right isn't that what we want successful teachers because successful teachers mean successful students it seems simple but um not everyone is as lucky and i understand that and so for that i'm sorry um lean on your peers Le you know um ask questions um so that's tip number one Tip number two is lean on and love your mentor if you are lucky enough to have a mentor teacher. I know most districts have mentor teachers for first year or second year teachers. I was lucky that I have one in this district who's like my, I'm gonna be my mentor for life. Like <laughs> I need her forever. Um, so if you don't have a mentor, if your district does not provide a mentor, then find one. Find that veteran teacher that can take you under their wing and tell you and show you the ropes. Um, make sure it's a positive mentor. Make sure it's someone that's a cheerleader for not only you, but for the district and for the students, right? Because it's easy to get caught up in the drama. Which leads me to tip number three. Avoid negativity. And that could mean eating lunch in your classroom. I've done it. I know at this school, the school is not about that. It's a very small school and we're a very tight knit community. I'd say we're a family, but there have been some schools that I've worked at that it was just like a room full of Debbie Downers. And that can bring you down, right? Because it's easy to get caught up in like what's wrong. But that's just not a good place to be, right? It's just, it doesn't benefit anyone to be like all day long listening to that. It doesn't mean you don't, can't, don't need to vent sometimes because trust me, <laughs> I know you need to vent. And I may be seen as the Debbie Downer sometimes. And that's because sometimes teaching is hard. All right, all the time teaching is hard, but it's wonderful or we wouldn't be doing it, or at least I hope we wouldn't be doing it. Um, create a vision statement, tip number four. Create a vision statement or a teacher mission statement for you. <clears throat> Nothing fancy, just something that will be your anchor on the hard days, on the days where you're questioning, why am I doing this? on the days that you're thinking you're not making a difference. Um, you don't have to share it with anyone. I'm gonna share mine with you. And um, so it will spark some creativity, maybe for you to make your own. But mine is, I do my best to get to know my students so I can best meet their cognitive development and social emotional needs. I like to invite parents into my classroom so they can feel that they are a partner in teaching. I prioritize parent contact so that I can listen to parents and learn about their precious children. So it's a work in progress, but those are like my main goals. It's kind of choppy, but that's kind of my stance on who I am as a teacher. Um, tip number five is to reflect and journal, even if it's just on a post-it. And not just like reflect about like, oh, that went really well in my math lesson, but every single success, even if it's just that Johnny who hates school seemed to enjoy the lesson today, or Monica who struggles with math had a light bulb moment. So try to write those things down, right? And I save every student note card, note, piece of artwork, and I put it in a binder. I hang it up first so that they see that it's important to me, but then I put it in a binder. And on the hard days, I go through that binder and I remember my why, because it's in there. It's for all those kids that took the time to draw me a picture, to write me a note, to cut out a little tiny heart and write their name on it to Mrs. as well. <coughs> so that's, some days what you got to hold on to. Number six, plan, 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 and plan some more. I mean that. I am an over planner and I 
plan and inevitably the plan changes because that is the story of life, right? But so I have a yearly plan, a monthly plan, a weekly plan, a daily plan, <laughs> and I plan. And I plan extra things to go for each area because lessons I think that are gonna take 40 minutes take 10. And lessons I think that are gonna take 10 take 40. So, you know, I think I go into that being flexible is one of my other tips. Excuse me, but we'll get to that. Um, number seven, be positive, right? Your students will perform better when you're encouraged by their teacher. So if you're positive and you're their cheerleader, they will do better. It's just a fact. It's just the way it is. Number eight, be flexible. Expect the unexpected. Snow days. Early dismissals. Illness. Fire drills. Assemblies. The list goes on and on. So you need to be ready to think on your feet and pivot and have a plan B and possibly a plan C. Because I have found that if it can go and can happen, it will happen. And it will happen in the middle of your observation. No, <laughs> hopefully not. But, you know, things happen. Kids get sick. Teachers get sick. It happens. Um, number nine, I feel kind of like a hypocrite talking about number nine because I am still trying to find my way and I struggle with this battle, but it's the work life balance. Dun, dun, dun. No, really you need to have and work hard to maintain a work life balance. And it's something I'm still working on. I'm a work in progress and it's getting easier. It's getting different. It's every year I think it's going to be easier and then it's not. And I have to pivot and figure out, you know, cause I'm like, oh, well this will be easier because I already did, did that work last year, but then I have to change it up because I have different needs. Oh, this year will be easier because I'm not in school. Well, now I'm in grad school. Oh, so I got to pivot. So, but teaching can be exhausting. All right, let me rephrase that. Teaching is exhausting. It's overwhelming and it's all consuming. The reality is your to-do list is never going to be done and you have to just be okay. And so I don't know where I heard it, but I don't wanna misquote it either, but it's something to the effect of done, is better than perfect or something like that. Anyway, um, and I, I think that really kind of stuck with me that, you know what, done is okay. If it's done, it doesn't need to be perfect to be done. Like, I like a lot of teachers, I'm pretty much a type A personality. I shouldn't say a lot of teachers, some teachers, right? And I like things done a certain way. I like everything to be ready. I like everything to be perfect, cut, laminate, the list goes on and on. But sometimes it just can't happen that way, right? <laughs> it, just, it just can't. I need to sleep at some point. And um, so yeah, there's always something to do. And my last tip is um, a hard one for me because it's much easier this year because it's I've been forced basically because of my, you know, physical and mental health, but take your days. You are guaranteed X number of days for paid time off. That's part of your contract. I was never one to take them because I suffer from migraines. So I would always feel like I had to save my days in case I got a migraine. I don't think like that anymore. If I need a mental health day, I take a mental health day. If there's a sub shortage, I'm sorry. It's not my, it's not my fault. It's not really my problem. And that sounds like I'm not being a team player. And that sounds like I, you know, don't care. And is it hard to be out? Yep. Is writing sub plans a pain? Yep. Is it worth it? Usually. So, um, those are my tips for new teachers and all teachers. And I'm nobody. 
So take it or leave it, right? <laughs> I'm just a teacher doing our teacher thing um, with a to-do list a mile long and a lesson plan book that is erased and moved on and crossed out and passed over. Um, but, you know, back to number one, build community. I feel like I do a really good job at that. Um, so my 10 tips are build community. Love and use your mentor. Avoid the negativity. Create a vision statement. Write down your why. Reflect. Journal. Focus on the positive. Try to find a positive every single day. Six. Plan, plan, and plan some more. Seven. Be positive. Eight. Be flexible. Nine. Work hard to maintain a work-life balance. Ten. Take your days. No excuses. So that's what all I have for you today. Um, I hope you enjoy that. If you liked this video, leave me a comment. If you have any questions, I would love to interact with you. Um, I just thought I would try this today because um, I haven't been great at the vlog. And I know everyone likes the vlog, and I do too. It's my favorite thing to watch on YouTube. It's just hard to do, like when you're caught up in the moment of day to day. And I don't always want to do like that. Oh, good morning. Oh, now it's the afternoon. I didn't talk to you all day. And like do a recap. Um, but if you're okay with that, then let me know that too. Because I could do like a morning, here's the plan. And then a debrief in the afternoon, like here's what happened with the plan. <laughs> um, but um, for those of you on vacation this week, happy vacation. Yay for not having to set an alarm tomorrow. And um, for everybody else, power on. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.